Hello, friends of Emmanuel, both near and far. Welcome to a breathing space. It was, uh, it's hard to believe, it was almost seven years ago when four of us began gathering in our church's parlor to begin meditating, something that was really new for our church. We had, I don't know if we can call it a goal, we entered in to what was the unknown with the hopes of finding some space to be closer to God. Over time, what we found was immense healing, healing of our spirits, but also a closeness together as a group, but also a closeness to God. Because what we found is when we could still all that is swirling around us in our lives, if we could still even for but a few minutes, that we could find that God is there with us waiting to be in relationship with us. So as time went on, this group grew and it became somewhat of a, I don't want to say a a special group, even though it is of course near to my heart, but it grew in its connection and it grew very important to this group of people because we found its value in our spiritual lives. Several other people over time mentioned how much they would like to participate in such a group, but unfortunately this group was meeting at 10 o'clock on a weekday morning. So thus, what I'm putting in front of you right now. It's my hope over the next year, if I can keep up, (laughs) is to offer a video such as this every Wednesday evening. My intent in this is to help you create some space for your own spiritual well-being in your life. Let's face it, our lives are busy. From the moment that we wake up, we're often thinking about things that we have to do. Many of us are running off to work. We have our kids that we have to make sure that we care for properly. We have all these things that take, take, take take away from our time, take away from our spiritual well-being. And if you're like me, what you often find is that you give very little back to yourself. And the thing that we're giving back to ourselves is not some luxury, it's a necessity. We are giving ourselves space to breathe, ourselves space to heal. We're providing an opportunity for us to be more aware of what we are embodying, but also to be more aware of God's presence around us. Scripture says, be still and know that I am God. God in that moment is saying to us that we must pause and really embody that statement really open ourselves up to the presence of God and to the fact that God is there in the silence with us, always waiting to reach out that hand for us to take. How can we be aware of it if we don't take a moment to sit still? So here's what I propose. As these videos come out, we're going to work very loosely with a devotional text. I chose one initially on St. Francis. It's a 30-day Um, It's supposed to be a 30-day devotional that we're going to stretch out over time because we're only going to do this uh, together uh, once per week. But what I'm asking for you to do is to find a time to spend with me in this video, whether it's that Wednesday evening when the video comes out, whether it's the next morning at 6 o'clock, or whenever you can find time for you. And be open to the idea of working through it. The format in which this is going to take is um, there will be a quotation from St. Francis, uh, somebody that I at least admire, but a good place to start as somebody who is keenly aware of God's presence in the world around him, as well as a scripture reading of my choosing. I'm going to read those to you and I'm going to reflect on what they mean to me. But then afterwards, we together are going to sit in some silence 
in which I will invite you to either contemplate what those readings mean to you or what my reflection says to you, or you might use that time simply to be quiet, to be still. It's my hope that over time you begin to see the value in doing this with me. It's not something that comes overnight. Um, for some of you that have heard my story before, you'll know that in seminary I had my first exposure to meditation, and this was in the Zen Buddhist tradition, and I had a really hard time seeing the value in it. My first thing I really struggled with is, how does this help anything? The second part was, what am I doing with my time? I'm wasting it sitting here. But it wasn't until further on as I grew in my Christian faith that I realized that in order for me to really care for other people, to really, in Buddhist terms, end the suffering of others, I first had to tend to myself, to tend to what's going on with me, to strengthen my relationship with me, but also with God. And I think meditation helps with that, even though sometimes it can feel really hard. So, I'm inviting you once per week to join me. If you're feeling really ambitious, take five minutes a day, a time that works for you. Maybe it's first thing in the morning when you wake up. Maybe it's the last thing you do before you go to bed. But take some time for quiet. As I've told somebody before, take 30 seconds when you grab your keys when you're about to go out the door. Nobody's going to care if you're 30 seconds late. But just work on that practice of trying to let go of all the things that are swirling around in your head. So let's take a moment to talk about meditation, uh, at least as I see it in the Christian tradition. As you'll see here, I have built for myself uh, what I would just regard as a, a, as a devotional space. It's a place where you know, I have an icon of Christ that speaks to me, just some objects that have meaning for me. It's a quiet place. It's a place that I feel comfortable being. As you enter into meditation, and after you have found a space that works for you, I invite you to find a way to sit that is comfortable for you. You don't have to sit on the floor as I'm doing so right now. You might find uh, an armchair to be most comfortable. You might find walking or standing to be most comfortable. Whatever works for you, that's okay. The most important thing is that you be present wherever you are, that you feel yourself in that space, that you are comfortable enough to not let it be a distraction for when you sit down. Now the very practice of meditation can vary from person to person. We all find different ways of doing it. Some ways are more effective than others. Uh, it's very, um, very much a very broad uh, tradition throughout many different religions to use what is called the mantra, some kind of word or expression that is repeated over and over again. And the Christian tradition, the Jesus prayer is one of such these that, uh, that goes from way back into the, the desert, uh, desert fathers who, who use this as a means of focusing their contemplation where they said, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison which is, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, repeating over and over, each phrase being a breath. Others might find some other word that just speaks to them to, for the day. Love, silence, whatever heart, love of God, whatever speaks to you in that moment, just keep using that as your mantra, the expression that you say over and over again. Other people use what are called visualizations. They might think of a place or think of a scene that is really meaningful to them. And they try to recreate it. They might shut their eyes and recreate it in their mind and use that as a focus. Some people might use a Bible verse. It's a very Christian thing to do. They might just sit there with it, repeating it over and over again. Again, or a phrase. Or maybe somebody will just visualize and hold some aspect of God that gives them great meaning, the love of God, steadfastness, mercy, grace, 
these concepts of God that draw us near and hold us fast. In any event, you need to find what works for you. And as you sit for meditation, what you're probably going to find very quickly is these don't seem to work very well. Your mind will probably begin to wander very quickly. Your back might start to ache. You might start to lose your focus and start thinking about all the things that you should be doing instead of sitting there, not moving, not talking, trying not to think. Again, that's okay. The best advice I can Feel your body be present. And just be with God.
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, give thanks for your presence. We are aware, dear God, that in this world we are so busy. We are torn in so many different directions that sometimes our head can spin. We find it difficult to breathe. We find it difficult to find rest and rejuvenation. Help us, dear God, at the start of this journey to find some breathing space, an opportunity to sit with ourselves and sit with you so that together with you, we might grow closer and deepen our faith. We recognize, dear God, that this journey ahead might not be easy, it might not always be possible, and we might struggle. But struggle can be joyful, dear God, when we grow closer to you, and when we grow closer to one another through our struggle. Be with us, dear God. Be with these people as they continue forward, trusting in your mercy and your love. Amen. Well, my dear friends, I hope this maybe gave you some meaning. I'm sure you were like me. Maybe a few things popped into your head here and there. As I said, next week we will try this again, but this time we will have a topic of conversation, a little bit of reflection and scripture to balance everything off, and we will talk about being made in the image of God. So, I invite you to take leave. Feel free to sit a little longer if you are still seeking some silence, but go forth into this gentle night with God holding you always in his grace. Be well. <laughs>